we'd lived together for like a couple months, if that. And I was like, do you want to do this podcast with me? And everyone was like, these girls are the best and they're the best of friends. But behind the scenes, it was a disaster. If today were your last day and I, I slid you a phone and said, you're going to have a conversation with, with that person, your former partner, would you dial the number? About like the last year or so that I had a co-host, I was really struggling. Um, and I was like, my mom kept being like, I need to be your mom. I can't be your therapist. Like you, you need to talk to someone. And that was when I finally, so that was about like 25, 24. And I finally was like, okay, I'm just going to get a therapist. And it was in New York city. And I would go in person with her and that it felt very, um, at first it felt very like, why am I here? Like, I don't need this. But then eventually it like cracked and it was really helpful, but it, it was not easy. I will say, I think a lot of people think therapy is like, sit down and tell your secrets. Like it's so awkward at first. If you're not, even I had a psychologist as a mother and I'm still like, I don't want to do this, but I think it's all in your head because once you open the floodgates, they never close. You were struggling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you asking me with what? Yeah. You, you said you were struggling. So you probably, from what you said, you were going to your mother and, and explaining mm -hmm. that there was a struggle. That struggle, is that is that a social struggle with a friend or is that a psychological struggle or? I think in business, there was a lot happening where I was living with someone I was doing business with. We were struggling with business. Like there were so many things happening and I was, how do I say this? I was struggling to take care of myself in an environment that was really unhealthy and was like the show was priority, but behind the scenes, it was a disaster. And so I was like compromising on a lot of things that like morally I didn't agree with or mentally I wasn't feeling good about. And it was at a really weird time because Call Her Daddy was like the biggest show ever. And everyone was like, these girls are the best and they're the best of friends and they're the best. And like, that's life. Like you, it's almost like how everyone talks about like Instagram, we put our best foot forward and it was all crumbling behind the scenes. And it was terrifying to me because I worked my whole life to like get to a point like this where I'm producing a show and it just felt very scary to me that I didn't have control of all the aspects going on. And the symptoms were psychological for you? Psychological. I was basically in a codependent relationship. Like it was so unhealthy um, for both of us. And uh, I think psychologically, yes. I even think physically it was taking a toll on me. Um, and then it was also taking a toll on my other relationships because like the partner I had at the time was like bearing the weight of me complaining about so much going on in my life because I couldn't go at the person that I had to get up every morning with and record. Right. Like I couldn't be, um, I had to keep the show going. So it was like very detrimental to yes, psych psychologically and my like mental health, like the show came first before. I think both of our personal needs. What was the advice you, you you needed most at that moment but didn't get? Or maybe just before that moment happened? Because that's kind of like, mm -hmm. that's when things start falling. Yeah. But if you'd got advice maybe a couple of years earlier, it would have prevented you getting into that situation. So what is that advice that, and I'm saying this because of there's someone at home now who's, you know, they want to follow in your footsteps in whatever career mm -hmm. or, or industry it might be. But when you get into business and things start going well, you wish, you just fucking wish that someone had told you. I mean, maybe that it's okay to leave. It's okay to leave a situation for both people involved. Um, it's okay to want to hold on to something because in some aspects it's really working. But if you are compromising your morals and your mental health and at one point your sanity, like 
it ain't worth it. Um, but again, I think like, even if someone had told me that I had to live through it because I worked my whole, my whole life for this. Like I finally got the show and I was producing and I was doing what I loved, but I then started to hate it. And that to me was when I was like, I didn't need anyone to tell me at that point that I should leave. It was like, oh, I've loved this my whole life. Something's off. Like if I'm this miserable, there's a better way. From that, you must have learned the factors that need to be in place professionally for you to love work because you, you got to experience head on all the factors that make a passion turn into yeah. misery. So on, on the flip side, what are the factors that you need and you believe people generally mm -hmm. need for them to like love their work? Yeah. I think that the first thing is like business is so, there's so many different layers. It's so, so complicated, even if it's just you. So then add another person in. It's almost impossible. And I think like it was so difficult. My partner and I at the time had such different wants, such different, you know, envisionments for our career in the future. And that is so okay. But I think the issue is like, if you have the ability to sit down before you begin, which we didn't really have, like, I remember I came home, um, one day or she came home from work one day. She was, uh, the third roommate to me and my best friend from childhood. We had met her. Like, it was like a very random, like, Hey, we need a third. Do you want to come live with us? We'd lived together for like a couple months, if that. And I was like, do you want to do this podcast with me? I had no idea it was going to be the biggest podcast in the world. I had no idea her wants and what truly she was interested in, what she was passionate about. We were passionate about such different things. So it's like, I think in business, you do have to actually believe that this could become the biggest thing. You have to put your mind there. And one, that's incredible for your self-confidence to be like, if you're starting a business, pretend it's about to be Apple envision and and who you're sitting next to do you want to be there with them or for yourself are you willing to get there and sacrifice certain things in your personal life to get there like whether it's a duo or a singular person like you actually have to envision yourself at the end line and at your goal because you have to mentally start to function that way because then all of a sudden you could get there and then you're like oh fuck I didn't plan for this and I think that's kind of what we both felt we were like we don't even really know each other three episodes in this is the biggest show in the world like we're drinking buddies like what this is not a this is not supposed to be a business and we are way in over our heads and I think that's okay but I look back and I'm like I had no idea what we were getting ourselves into but I do think in business it's like you gotta think big because once you get there you better be prepared and I wasn't. <laughs> There's an interesting point here though about being a people pleaser. When a people pleaser strikes it big, it's hard to like put up those boundaries and start mm -hmm. like saying what you want and what you need and having, cause even the conversation we had a little bit a while ago about aligning and communicating what you want from the jump so that further down the line, you don't mess things mm -hmm. up and regret it requires a difficult conversation at the start. Yeah, I, I wasn't even like aware of how much I was people pleasing until it got to that breaking point where I was like, there were so many things I was doing to appease people around me to keep the show going that was so unhealthy that now I have, in hindsight, I'm like, what was I doing? <laughs> why was I like getting people out of bed? Like, why was I like managing like drugs and alcohol and like trying to be this like fixer? And then it's like, just trying to put a show on. I think I was like a little over my skis. I just said that because I was skiing this weekend. So that's, <laughs> that's the only analogy. I'm like over my head. I'm like over my skis. Um, you can get down a really, really dark path if you do have a goal in order to get there. And that is also advice I give people of like, it's not worth losing yourself to get the prize because what, what was hard for me is like public perception 
So I've talked to you about how much I care about people liking me. Now I'm on a world stage and there's comments and there's people and there was like a public fallout with a woman. So there's like someone's going to be the victim and someone's going to be the villain. And I was the villain. And I'm like, how did this happen? Like to me, I think publicly I struggled so much for a while of like wanting to tell the full story and wanting to tell the truth and be like, I promise like, but I'm also then like my character was like, I I don't think anyone needs to know what happened behind closed doors and how dark it got. And, but I just know that I was proud of myself that I did. I know I'm a good person, but when you see the internet picking sides or doing this like it fucks with you and I imagine for her it fucked with her like it was really hard I think for two women to go through something so big in a COVID pandemic um that people just wanted drama but I think my people-pleasing tendencies of like wait why are these people thinking something that I'm not that ate me alive inside and I had to have my boyfriend my mother my father my therapist be like you both know the real story that's it. That's all you need to know. And so I think it took me a while though, where I was like, I want to clear the air. Like how many times are we going to go back and forth? Like, you know what I mean? But it can get exhausting trying to make people know your character and who you are. Um, especially when I've been talking on the internet for almost now five years, like people think people have a perception of me and, and that's something I have to live with and be okay with, but it's hard. I remember someone wrote in, um, in the diary of a CEO, this little book that I have in front of me, guests, when they leave, they write a question for the next guest. Someone wrote in this book, if today were your last day and you had to have a 60 second conversation with someone in your life, um, what would you say to them and why? And I was just wondering, as you're saying all of this, this was clearly a really tumultuous, pivotal moment in your life for better Mm -hmm. and for worse in many Mm -hmm. respects. Are there any words unsaid? If today were your last day and I I slid you a phone and said, you're going to have a conversation with, with that person your former partner, would you dial the number? Would you say anything? No, because I think in a weird way, like when there's time, I think both sides, and I acknowledge both sides have their own story that then just keeps going on. Like, I'm like, what even is the reality anymore? We both have such different storylines of everything that happened. If I was like forced to, I would just say like, I hope you're healthy and you're well, but I think we're both like in a beautiful way. I I said this to someone recently. I was like, it's so much better that we're both doing our own things. Like that's the same thing in like romantic relationships. Like I think a lot of times you try to keep making something work. It shouldn't be that difficult. It really shouldn't. If it's meant to work, it will be working. And I'm in the healthiest relationship of my life right now. And I'm like, this feels great. This is what it's supposed to feel like. So no, I, I don't think that I would pick up the phone because I think we see things very differently and that's okay. That's life. Like that's the world that's politics, that's religion, that's friendships ending, that's marriages ending. Like, you're just going to be like, I don't see it like you. And that's okay. Um, I think the internet's probably a little bit more invested than even the two of us are. But yeah, I think that would be just, I hope you're healthy. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.